Hi, I'm back. Hello, hello, hello. Um, I, I'm back again doing another live. This I promise this will be my last one for today. Um, <laughs> and I'm just going to bring it up on screen here so I can see all your comments and make sure that everything's in focus. Um, there we go. And, oh, God, I can hear myself. There we go. Oh, good, it's in screen too. That's not ideal. Slide that out the way. How are we all this afternoon? Had lunch, had a coffee. I'm just about ready for a glass of wine. Well, hello again, Karen. You are definitely turning into my number one stalker. <laughs> Love that. Um, so this afternoon, I decided uh, to do a scrapbook page and I have no idea what I'm going to do other than use this stencil. Um, use this stencil by, uh, by Marlene. Um, for those of you who last month did an order with me for Stencil Girl stencils, uh, I think I, I let everybody know yesterday, but my Stencil Girl order has disappeared between here and America. Um, so I don't actually have any stencils to really demonstrate with, which is a bit of a bummer. Um, for Stencil Girls. So what I thought I would do is show you some of the other really pretty ones that I've got in the shop. And this one here by Art by Marlene is absolutely gorgeous. There are two of these mandala type masks, stencils, and they are really, really nice to use. And I want to show you how to use a stencil on a scrapbook page and also use the Lindy's Gang Magicals as well. Um, because I really don't know what I'm doing, I've got no idea how long this is going to go for, but I've also pulled off the shelf some of these tissue collage papers. Um, got a little die cut thingy here, and I've got a some dictionary paper. So, um, pour yourself a coffee, have a bit of a... Um, have a bit of a sit down and I will talk through what I'm going to do with this project. So this time um, I am using, I'm using the marshmallow cardstock again. So marshmallow cardstock is fantastic. Oops, I haven't turned my comments on, sorry. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah, I hope it wasn't in those containers that fell out to see as well. Um, so I'm using the marshmallow cardstock. So marshmallow is a slightly heavier weight cardstock. It's not thin. The reason I like this for mixed media projects and scrapbooking pages is because it has got a little bit more weight to it. Um, so the stencil that I'm using is nice. It's a beautiful, beautiful pattern. And instead of using a stencil girl sorry not stencil girl instead of using modeling paste i'm going to be using 13 arts white gesso sorry. so the reason i'm using 13 arts white gesso is because um it's super white it's not too thick and it's going to add a really nice resist to my page as well um yes jessica Mary Day Questions saying, have you used the Vicky Booten Foundations paper? Um, no, I haven't used Vicky's Foundations paper yet. This is my go-to and I'm super keen to try it. But I do have, um, and I'll get Jess to grab them in a moment, I do have the, why is that screen skipping? Can you see it skipping at your end or is it just I, on my tablet? I've just got the comments up on that Okay, um, the Vicky Booten paper that she does is absolutely beautiful and she does these beautiful patterned, like almost ready to go mixed media. I'll show you that in a moment. So, all right, so this 13 arch gesso is really cool and it is excellent for using with stencils 
because it has body to it and you can see as I'm talking it's actually just chunked off and fallen onto my um, stencil but you have to it's got a real jelly like consistency to it and what I like is that it has body so I'm using my catalyst tool again to um, to spread it out whoops it's a chunky bit it's a dry crusty bit on my lid I took it off the lid um, spread it out just like that and I'm following the stencil pattern as well that's really important so then I'm not going against the grain at all so when you use the 13 arts gesso for the first time um, a lot of people freak out because it's all a bit gluggy and a bit gross and they don't quite know what to do with it but it is absolutely amazing for stenciling because it's it's light it's white it leaves a lovely crisp impression and I, I really really like it so I'm just working it backwards and forwards now I'm going to lift it up move it over to here and do exactly the same thing except for that bit that I dropped Alright, so because it's quite a large stencil, I'm not using the whole image, the whole pattern on my page. I'm, I've chosen to go half on, half off, and it is overlapping onto my glass mat, which is great because that is going to come dry or come clean as soon as I give it a wipe over with a baby wipe. And then I can pop another one down the bottom here. And you can see, and I'll bring it up to the camera in a moment, but you can see that it has left a fantastic impression. And, and it looks pretty good. Think you can see that excellent so next thing that needs to happen is I need to heat that heat or dry it with a heat tool heat set it but I'm not going to do that because here's one I prepared earlier fabulous okay um, you guys didn't need to see me hitting a heat tool again and um, watching paint dry you think you've seen enough of that this weekend um, what I'm all before I do this my next step is going to be quite watery. So I'm going to put down my puppy training pad um, that's going to catch all of my wet drips. So sorry while I just lean into the camera a bit and tuck that in under there. And hopefully, there we go, we're all in focus. Um, my thinking here is I just want to add a little bit of color to my background so I have got here in front of me the Lindy's Gang Magicals and what uh, we are going to be using is a combination of the magical shaker and the pots so the other thing that I have handy is a water spray and that's pretty much it uh, I don't heat tool. I've got my heat tool handy. Um, so the Lindy's Magicals are a pigment dye-based powder, which means the pigment means they are full of colour. The dye means that they are permanent, and the powder means that I need to activate it with water. So I have got Delphinium Turquoise, French Lilac Violet, Hibiscus Rose, and yodeling yellow hi vicky how are you today hey. sweetheart um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put these onto my background to create my color now these three here are all shimmery magicals and this one is a flat magical so this one has no shimmer to it at all but these ones here have a little bit of glimmer before i do anything else um Always check that your water spray is, is working. I like these nice trigger ones. I've got a couple of different ones. I think I've actually, no, I've got one in the shop. The water 
Jess, grab me the um, water spray bottle, please. The in that box right there. Yep, one of those. How much are they? I think they're four dollars. Those are. They are super inexpensive, and these ones here are really handy because they've got that great trigger. Um, so crafts for you. You'll find them in the tool section online. The other thing I've got handy is a paintbrush. So this is a fan brush. You can use any paintbrush, just as long as it's dry. But I like a fan brush that has got, um, that can pick up a little bit out of my palette here. All right, let's do this. Um, okay, so my photograph, I've got a bit of a photo here. I just need to trim it down. And I'm gonna put that right in the, I'm gonna put it about here. So I want my color to be in and around this area. The gesso on my thumb. I might start with purple, because purple is my least favorite color to use. So I'm going to go with that and go with the less is best option. So I'm gonna dip my brush straight into the pot. And then I'm just gonna sprinkle a little straight onto my page. Now the camera is probably not picking it up very well but there is definitely some there. Jess, can you turn on these overhead lights for me, please? Um, Annette, love the pic. Yeah, that photo is a, oh, there we go. That's a bit brighter. Sorry, guys. Um, that photo is a photo of Fiona and I taken at a little event last year. Uh, it was very early in the morning. Um, so yeah, anyway, you can see that there's a little bit of powder on that. Now, water straight on and I need to activate it. Check that out. So you can see that a little bit goes a really long way. The more water you add, the more the pigments are gonna to come together and they're going to become quite strong and intense and that powder's all been activated. So this sweet lilac violet is absolutely gorgeous. Hi there, Rosalind. Thank you for joining in, love. So I'm just hitting it with the heat tool just because I, I, I'm gonna be adding more water to this, but I don't wanna completely saturate everything. So just by drying it a little bit in between is going to make the process a lot quicker for drying time. Any little puddles, I can just dab off with my paper towel. Uh, I'd like to add some delphinium turquoise next. Um, I just give the pots a little bit of a shake backwards and forwards before I use them, just to fluff them up a bit. If they've been sitting on my desk and haven't been used for a week or so, then I find that they, they settle a little, but there we go. Okay, so again, a little bit of turquoise powder straight over the top. And I'm just putting it in a couple of different parts because the the purple is so very strong. Whoops, that's a lot. So this one is dual del delphinium turquoise. How much are these, Jess? The Magical pots. If you put your phone down, darling. Yes, it is down. First world problems for a 16 year old. Uh -huh. And now I'm activating that powder. So what I do love as well is that I can be a little directional with my water spray. So I can get up in there. Magicals are $6.50 each. So Magicals are $6.50 each, but with 30% discount, that comes down to, drum roll please. How much? No. Goodness me. Do some maths, darling. Five dollars and fifty-two cents. Five dollars fifty-two each for these little pots of magic. Um, now, if you like the shakers better than the little pots, uh, I've recently just popped online as well the empty shaker bottles. So you can purchase a couple of empty shakers and. Add, um, pop your powders straight into those. So you can see that I'm just, I'll put my paper towel down, oh, here we go. Um, you can see that I've just heat set that just to make sure that it's dry and just to take a little bit of that wetness out of it. 
Now I'm gonna add a tiny amount of hibiscus rose. So this is the one that has no shimmer to it and it's a super bright, awesome color. So I don't want too much of hibiscus rose. I just want a little sprinkle. Famous last words. Yeah, Jessica just said they're 30% off. They're no. not 30% off. I actually off. said it. She is absolutely... I'm an update. I'm sorry, Kerry. She is a 16-year-old, bless her cotton socks. They are 15% off. We are doing really well for this Saturday. But they are 15% off. But if you do an order, I will put in um, some little samples for you to play with some little bits and pieces. So, kid's gonna send me broke. Okay, so you can see the hibiscus rose has pumped up that lovely bright color. Did anybody else, <laughs> um, did anybody else catch Jessica's little live Facebook that she did earlier showcasing some of the papers that we've got in store? Uh, Jessica's first live Facebook, so she did really well other than being a little uh, repetitive on a couple of little words, but that's okay because we all do it too when you're put under pressure and mm -hmm. you feel like you're talking to yourself when you're on camera, yeah. so... Even though that I know that all of you are out there... All right, so last thing I want to do is give it a punch, a good punch of colour. So I've got the yellow here. <laughs> so this is where, um, oh hi Kash, how you going Del? Um, so this is where I'm going to be playing with fire because yellow is the colour that if you mix it with purple, yellow and purple are going to make brown. But I just want to add a, a little bit uh, no, she's not taking over the family business, no, Vicky. No, no. <laughs> um, it's just, the yellow's just going to add a little, a little pop of colour. So I need to be very careful about where I'm going to put the put the yellow. So I'm just going to bring this up to camera so you can see how very very awesome it looks. And you can see all of those beautiful pigments coming out. Yeah, you can see the videos later, um, Kerry, because they're all saved on my timeline. So, hi, Danny. How are you? I see you watching. Um, all right. So, next bit, we've got to add a little bit more colour here. So, this is the yellow. This is where it's probably all going to go bad because yellow... And purple make brown. So even though I've dried that to touch dry, I'm going to put a small amount of yellow in a couple of little spots. And I'll start with a little sprinkle up here and it's just giving it, oh, that's all right. And then I'm going to quickly heat set it before it runs into something else and I completely shag it up. So, sorry, mess it up. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> All right, cool. Then I want a little bit down here. Yeah, look at that. So if you're unsure, less is best. Um, oh, Tina, I can mess it up. I am really, really good at messing things up. It's just more a case of how you choose to deal with your mess ups how you choose to deal with it. Um, I don't always tell everybody if I have messed up and you know, what's that What's that? That very crude saying about polishing a turd? That's really not the best thing to say. No, but, I don't even know where you're going But you that. know, it, it is, it's making something that you don't necessarily like look good and don't point it out. Don't point out that it's it's terrible. You just make it work for you. So you can see what I'm doing, just going around the page, adding little pops of yellow where I think that it will work, activating that powder, and then heat setting it. Oh, I'm verging on making mud in that section. 
Um, just heat setting it before it turns into something that I don't like. There are no mistakes no, in a... <laughs> yeah, there, there are mistakes, but it's how you choose to deal with your mistakes. That's your difference. That's my theory anyway. All right. So I hope you've all been enjoying my <laughs> live Facebooks I've been doing. Um, they are they're a lot of fun. But I can tell you what, it takes a whole day to get them organised. It's, it's, it's quite a bit of work. Um, I'm just going to pop a little bit more down here. There we go. All right, so I'm getting close to being really happy with this. Uh, that annoys me. There's a big dark spot here, but uh, we can probably cover that up with an embellishment, I reckon. Or you know what? Let's just commit to... There we go. Either making it worse or... Alrighty, so that's what embellishments are for. Yeah, I know. I I don't want to put too many embellishments on this. I want the hero to be the stenciling, and I think that that is going to happen if I play my cards right. Okay, so here is my background. I'm going to bring it up to camera. So you can see that that yellow, this is yodeling yellow sitting on top there and it is, it's really super bright. Thank you, Tina. Um, I do enjoy putting in the time and I'm missing teaching at the moment. I'm missing seeing all my faces, all those girls and absolutely love doing these and I could just do this all day let's be honest I need an assistant to come and pack orders and do the things for me so um all right next right let's let's put something else on this page uh so my photo I need to although this is all pretty it has to be about the photo scrapbooking is about the photo it's a that's the reason we do it so I've got a photo here, black and white one that I have matted. And like I always do, I've got a piece of cardboard and I'm going to use that instead of foam tape. Uh, mind you, foam tape is 15% off this weekend. Dun, dun, dun. Um, but I use cardboard just to give it a little bit of body. A uh, bit of a tip, if you are buying foam tape and double-sided tape, don't buy the cheap stuff because all your photos and your embellishments are just going to fall off. Pay a dollar more and buy something that is not cheap shit. Okay, sorry, cheap stuff. Buy the nice stuff the first time and... Yeah, it's a leather handbag, vinyl handbag situation, right? Pay a little bit more, you'll get something that'll last a lot longer. Um, okay, so my photo has been matted, ready to go. Just going to pull those little tails off. And I want my photo to sit about here. You know, this is almost looking fluorescent. How cool is that? Alrighty. A um, couple of quick embellishments. I've got the Scrap Effects typeface collage paper. These are so cheap. These are $3. $3. Um, and I want to put some strips of this on my page. So it's a beautiful textured paper. 
And I'm going to put some strips across my page. There's a whole heap of designs in this collage paper. So um, you'll find a whole section on my site, which is just called collage paper. Uh, so you'll be able to easily find it. So this one is typeface and that's exactly what it is. It's just typeface letters. Um, right, let's see what else we can find here in my little stash. I have got the abstract number one collage paper. Oh, look at that. How beautiful is that? I could just stick that down and put a photo on it. What do you reckon? Mm. No. Okay. Um, I'm not going to use this paper. It is absolutely beautiful, this collage paper, but I don't want to use it because it is too busy for my busy background. So it's not going to work for this project and the colors, other than the yellow, the colors don't match. So I'm gonna pop that one aside. So how do I, oh, I'll get some normal book paper. That's what I'll use. So this used to be a dictionary you know, like Google on paper. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Google on paper. So um, I'm going to, oh, and a thesaurus. Oh, I love thesaurus. <laughs> Jessica what? can't say thesaurus. thesaurus. It saves me within the school. All right. So what I want to do is just p casually whack some strips down through the middle. Keeping it simple because it's about the photograph. So I'm using my puzzle glue again and just putting strips down so I'm going to start with oh, a bit of that now I'm one of these people that if you are putting lettering on the pages it has to be straight I can't do this whole mishmash of letters and stuff that just messes with my head so so the cool thing about this is I've got a couple of different mix ups mixed sort of typefaced typeface different sorts of typeface with the um book paper and the collage paper okay um so while i'm doing this uh i've got an online class starting next saturday that is a multi-layer art journal page. If you haven't already booked in, it is a class that you can jump on and do at any time. I'm going to be filming it live in a private group on Facebook next Saturday. Then you will be able to watch it as you please from there. Um, you will have full access to the group after that to share your creations look at other people's creations learn a little bit about the technique the class is only 26 dollars and it is in a that we create the page in a large dilutions art journal and all going to plan my shipment of big journals will be in i've got 10 journals coming and they will be here on Tuesday, hopefully. So, all right, we're on the right track here. What type of glue are you using? What type of glue am I using? I am using, thank you for asking, Jess. <laughs> um, I'm using the puzzle glue from uh, that I bring in from Poland. The reason I like this glue is that it is quick drying and it is it has a lovely fine nozzle. Um, Yes, of course, I don't do things by halves. Like, seriously, bringing it in from Poland is not the best option, but is it's a, a really great glue. Did somebody ask that, or are you asking that? I just asked that. You're just asking that. You're isn't... such an idiot. No, I'm not. Um, okay. So, 
we're on the right track here. I know I'm covering a little bit of that stuff up there, but it has to be my eyes got to go back to the photograph. Um, I know the subject matter in the photo is enough to bring your eye to it anyway. <laughs> um, but just the same, I've got a couple of different textures of this paper here. So, um, Jess, can you grab me another bit of cardboard, please? I want that to sit up just that little bit higher. Um, thanks. In your own time. At the bit, yeah. Could you also grab me some Black Lindy spray, please? The Black Lindy spray should be on about the third shelf behind you. I'll tell you what, it pays to have an assistant in the studio sometimes. And only two minutes before you were talking about how you don't, how you want an assistant. I do, like, I do. Is it, you know what? All right. So I want my photo to sit up that little bit higher because I've got so much going on in here. So I'm just putting off camera here. Sorry, I don't realise I'm doing it off camera is I'm putting a little bit of, a bit more cardboard on the back just for a little bit of extra height instead of using foam tape. Um, and I will pop that about, yeah, that looks good. All right, hi, Melissa Kennedy, how are you? All right, so we're on the right track here. I have created our bright, colourful background here. Um, put a few strips of paper through the middle to bring it all back to here. What I also want to do is I'm going to pop this beautiful mandala on here. Um, mandala, mandala. Mandala. Mandala, mandala, I don't know. But it's, it's really, really pretty. So, and, and I want to cut it in half. So this mandala, Jessica's about to look up the price and tell me how much it is. Um, at the end of the class, what I'll do is, like the others, is I will put a, a link. Which starts with that one, number one or number seven? I'll put a link up to the, um, I'll put the photo of the finished page and I'll put a link to all the products that I have used. So, um, but these little cutouts of the mandala are quite oh, inexpensive. Sorry. Yes, Jessica got sidetracked there. No, I thought you were talking about the other mandalas. I want to pop that one there. Yeah, I thought you were talking about the Mm, I'm going to hold off from putting this one on at the moment. What I do have, and I did get in this week, is something really cool. Um, local Australian little Tamworth. company out of Tamworth called Flutterby Creations. Um, Anita has created this gorgeous pack of embellishments, which is perfect for arty crafty people like us. And... This um, this is the die cut bibs and bobs, and they are seven dollars fifty. Uh, absolutely perfect because you get all of these little bits in, and they would be fantastic in an art journal. Um, Jess, can you grab the ISO cards for me, please, while you're up? Um, so I thought these would be fantastic for adding my title to that particular photo and adding some embellishments. Um, the other thing that Flutterby does are these she's bought out these everyday etc cards which are fantastic for project lifers as well as scrapbookers as um oh it's got naughty words on here um <laughs> i just noticed that but these are fantastic because they are all about the cool things with um isolation so now i'm not filtering these if you are offended <laughs> by bad language this is the first time i've opened the packet um so this about sums up isolation quite nicely here. Enjoyed a glass of wine or two in the sun in the backyard, didn't we? Well, mm -hmm. you didn't because you're too young to drink. Mm -hmm. um, but these are brilliant. Wash your hands. 2020 shit show. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, 
Um, thank you, Uncle Dan's, for keeping parents sane. Uncle Dan's is what um, I actually thought. It was just us that called Dan Murphy's Uncle Dan's. Well, I there was that one in but apparently it's something else. Um, why did I buy a 2020 planner? Yeah. So okay. they've got these really cool, obvious things in here. Things that we were all thinking, but someone actually put them onto scrapbooking stuff. So I think that they're fantastic. So I still got a few of those in store. <laughs> uh, and uh, I relate to the 2020 planner. Yeah, I know, Mel. I'm feeling for you, honey. Um, so, yeah, there's all sorts of cool things. Before coronavirus, I'd cough to cover a fart. Now I fart to cover a cough. <laughs> that was my favourite one when we found the one. Jessica thought that was hysterical. Um, yeah, it probably did, didn't I? Bedroom, bathroom, hallway, kitchen, repeat. Yep. That was me during ISO. No, Jessica, you didn't leave your bedroom no, for I three did. days. No. Okay, so that's um, there's all sorts of cool stuff here. So they are available online in embellishments and in the new stuff category. So, um, okay, back to this stuff. So what I want to do is I want to find some embellishments to go on my page. So somehow, oh, the dogs are barking. Um, all right, so I've got both the pages here and I want to put Yep, go and yell at your dogs, please, Jess. Um, I want to put some of these little things on because I kind of think these are cute. And these describe Fiona and I. Um, we've been friends for, oh, I reckon she'd say probably way too long. Um, but I think that, you know, it, it sums up, <laughs> the, you know, we, we met as arty people. And um, I'm sure that she would love to try and get rid of me, but. That ain't happening. Um, what's that word say? Happy? All right. So I need one big, awesome title here. What's it going to be? That kind of works. Art is important. Um, I think my husband has just got home. He's been out fishing since six o'clock this morning. So, um, what have we got? What have we got? Brave adventure. Art is an important adventure. Is that dad home? No. Oh, look at that. All right. So here's a few little embellishments. So these are really cool. And what I th I just love that the colours are fantastic. Art speaks. Art speaks where words are unable to explain. Yeah. Everything you ever wanted is on the other side of fear. Uh, damn right. Um, okay, so I'm pretty happy with what I have chosen here. So I want to pop a few more love hearts on there though. So I'm going to pop those aside. All right. Have I, has everybody lost interest yet? Because, sorry, I know I'm waffling, but <laughs> that's what I do best. Before I stick these on, I'm going to add some black splatter. Because I haven't got any stamping on my page, and I usually love a little bit of stamping, um, I need to add black for dimension up in this area a little. So... What I will do is I'll show you how I have done some black splatter. I'm just tearing off this excess book paper. Um, I have got a black Lindy's spray and a thin paintbrush and, a pap and some paper towel. So... What the paper towel is for is to cover my photo and any bits that I don't want splattered. So you can use any sort of black ink. You can even use black watercolours for this. But I want to go with the less is best approach. So I'm moving it up out of screen because chances are I'll knock it over. All right. 
and I'm just going to do a light tap of black and then I'm going to dry it straight away before it bleeds out too much. And I'll do exactly the same thing down the bottom. Ooh. Jessica, why are you laughing? Is this something that you would like to share no, with the rest of the group? Right. And drawing that off. So it's all about making a quick decision when you're doing this. Um, <laughs> hey, Bronwyn, how are you going? Oh my gosh, you are working 85 oh hours. No, actually, to be honest, I feel like I've done about that out here this you week. Have. I'm looking forward to taking Tuesday off. Tuesday will be my second day off in eight weeks. And I'll tell you what, all I want to do is get my nails done. I feel as though you should take the week off. I feel like I should take the week off. If I take the week off, Jessica, who does the work, hey? Uh, there we go. There, exactly. So, um, all right. Because you guys totally tuned in to hear me argue with my 16 year old. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the silicon tape. Um, I don't know if any of you have seen this, but silicon tape is exactly that. Can you see that it's clear? It's super sticky. It sticks to flame and everything, right? So I'm going to use that today. And I'm going to... Oh, here's a bit that I cut off before. Bit of a tip, you keep this bit on because you know how red tape is super tacky? This stuff is like that as well. So it is super sticky and it can be a little difficult to get off of the roll. So I could use normal foam tape, but I want to use this one because I'm putting it over something that isn't 110% dry. So it is a really awesome product and it is fantastic for working with under vellum as well and transparent things. And it's stretchy. See how I'm stretching that? Can you see? Yeah, I guess you can. And I'm gonna let that overlap. And I'm gonna put my journaling on these paint tubes. That's a good idea. Do you guys do journaling on your scrapbooking projects? Does anybody still journal or do you just do this for pretty stuff? Anybody? Mm. Nobody's saying anything about now, are they? Mm. Well, maybe that's because I turned the comments off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, there we go. Oh, now I've lost them. There we go. Now I can't get it off. Oh, my God. Mm. So 15% um, off this tape as well. Um, and it's quite inexpensive tape too so yeah look you guys still do journaling good good journaling is important that's the reason we do this is to tell our story and don't forget to put yourself in photos um, nobody else is going to tell your story you have to tell your own story um, and that's super important I I am an absolute stickler for telling your own story. Most of you know that I had a little, um, a little, I don't know, what's the word? I got cancer, right? So that's the best way of saying it. <laughs> I, and I don't now, but I did, and had ovarian cancer. And telling that story in my scrapbooking is is really important. So... I've done that in a lot of my scrapbooking pages. And I think that if I don't tell my story, where's it going to be? Who's going to be able to tell the story when I'm gone? Who's going to be able to tell my story when I'm gone? So that's why it's really important to put your journaling on 
paper. Tell your story. Um, hi there, Kylie. How you going, honey? Um, all right, so I'm going to pop these on. Oh, love the silicone tape, but what did I say about it that it's super sticky? Yeah. All right, art is important. So I'm going to put art is important. And then I'm going to put adventure and I'm going to hand write an because I've got a whole journaling thing going on here in my head. So unfortunately for you guys, you just have to go with the process while I get it all out of my head. So I'm gonna stick this baby on and do a little doodling around the edges and then it is finished and add my journaling. And then I will post a photo up on Facebook uh, with the links to what I have used here. Um, Jess is going to do a little live Facebook this afternoon. Have you got a time for that? Um, no, I haven't set a time for that, Jess. I'm feeling like I need a cup of coffee. Oh, shit, I put that on the wrong side. Um, so Jess is going to do a little boom gel, boom gel pour because we've decided to knock all of our boom gel down by 40% yep. to clear it off because I'm not going to be stocking it anymore. So I would love it if you would come back and support the 16-year-old if you've got nothing <laughs> else to do with your afternoon. Um, it could be a little rusty. Oh, wow, Carrie ann oh That's God. a heck of a story. Wow. <gasps> well, yeah, and we're here. We're here to tell the story, aren't we? Oh, my God. Okay, so I'm going to pop that down there. Hey, hey. Um... Last thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of doodling around my frame because I've got black in my photo, black in my embellishments. I need, and I haven't got any stamping. I need to, I need to put a frame around my scrapbook page. Okay, so I need to use a, let's get rid of that because that's wet. I need to use a black pen. So this is the Pilot Drawing Pen, which is a waterproof pen. And it goes over just about every surface. So you could use your favorite pen. I'm a bit of a pen junkie. I do love me a good pen. Um, and I haven't cut the barcode strip off my basil cardstock here either. So, um, Let's just pretend that that's where it is. But yeah, a good pen is important. Um, and picking something that you're confident with is also going to work. And I'm confident with this pen because it's waterproof and it's going to go over everything. The food ball pen, which is um, another one that I have in stock, that is another one that works great. So... Um, there you go. All right, so just finishing up. Thank you, everybody, for sticking this one out. Gosh, it's nearly been an hour. Sorry. Um, but I'll add a little bit more journaling to this and a few more little finishing touches and then post a photograph with the links to what we have used. The, um, we've used basil cardstock marshmallow for the background which is a heavier weight i then used stenciling with the art by marlene stencil as well in the uh in the background but instead of using modeling paste i used 13 arts white gesso um, because it is white and it is really lovely to use um after that was dry, we added the Lindy's Magicals in the background using Yodeling Yellow in the shaker, Hibiscus Rose in the pots, French Lilac Violet and Delphinium Turquoise. Um, I used a Scrap Effects Mandala die cut as well, um, one of these little Beautiful little black ones. I only used half of it in the side here because I couldn't decide where to put the other one. Um, oh, and I forgot the love hearts. The embellishments are from the Flutterby's Mark Maker 
die cut bibs and bobs, bits and bobs, and the collage paper through the middle from Scrap Effects. So there's some cool things on that page, and I hope I didn't make that look too hard. Most importantly, it's all about this photo of these two idiots. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you're all having a fantastic Saturday and jump online, nataliemay.com.au and I look forward to chatting to you all soon. Mwah!